Second by Sandra, open to public comment on anything other than what's on the agenda. Okay. Seeing so none, uh, recommend to the council we close public comment at 6.05 p.m. So moved. So moved by Sam. Second. Second. By, hmm? Second. Sean, all in favor say aye. Aye. Seeing you fine. Okay. So I'm seeing it wrong. Okay, so now we have the consent agenda. Did everybody get a chance to look at the council meeting, council table, restaurant, revenue, and nothing else. Make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Okay, second by Sandra. Roll call, please. Schultz? Yes. Schultz? Yes. Theodore? Yes. Walker? Yes. Hitchcock? Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Please report. Chris, that's you, Chris. How are you? Uh, if you notice, there's a little bit different format. Uh, that was requested by my admin, so we changed it up just a little bit. Uh, it gives you an idea of what's going on in the week. So, um, In the first week of the month, um, the found property complaint, uh, someone found a sawed-off shotgun in their, uh, in their garage, had no idea it was there, so we took care of that. Uh, we were dealing with uh, uh, a couple days in a row, uh, a child abuse complaint on 4,000 block of uh, Hardy Road. Um, we saw charges on the parent involved, <clears throat> and the parent is it's a single parent, and they are uh, uh, going through some lots of uh, uh, we want to say lots of therapy with the kids and, and stuff. So uh, let's see. Uh, we had a suspicious vehicle that was delivering paper, papers uh, in Avenal Way, uh, that subdivision on Party Road. Ended up just being a delivery guy taking a nap on the side of the road. Um, uh, the week of 14 through the 20th, initiated contact with a guy um, who I had prior dealings with, ended up having a warrant out of Kingdom County. So we were, I arrested him on lodged him in ICJ. Um, also, I attended the safety patrol pic picnic at uh, Hawk Island, the city of Lansing. That's basically touch a truck or kids in Ingham County. They invite all the schools. So I don't think Weberville had anybody go this year, but they generally do when it's available. So that was a good time. Uh, let's see. Responded to the, got a call about, well, this was uh, the 21st to the 27th. Responded to a complaint of uh, someone stealing some items from uh, the cemetery. Uh, someone took a, uh, one of those large shepherd hooks and a flower basket. So they didn't have any idea who it was. And then, uh, let's see. Um, uh, one of the 
the days I was off, uh, our deputies responded to Waterville Elementary. Uh, excuse me, something, another one. Um, sounds like the, the suspect child has got a lot of uh, mental health problems, and so they're investigating, but the school is handling it through general civil charges. Well, more of the, no charges are probably, charges are probably not going to be sought on that. Uh, I suppose the biggest thing that really <clears throat> occurred was uh, uh, towards the end of the year, I got a call from the high school about a student, actually one of my partners took it, a student had an inappropriate texting conversation with one of the students. Um, the student that was having the conversation with the teacher uh, didn't disclose that there was anything inappropriate, parents knew about it, and uh, since there was no disclosure of anything, uh, we are not seeking charges, however, the school has fired the teacher. Um, and then the last couple days of May, there was no uh, significant activities. Uh, one thing you can see at the bottom is, the, see if I can say that, statistics. Um, total incidents that like a complaint number was taken. This doesn't include what we call CAD numbers. CAD numbers are something we type into the into our uh, computer and just add some quick notes. But these are incidents that we take a uh, take an actual criminal complaint on. So we had eight of those in the month of May. Uh, one arrest, two traffic stops with three citations. Um, we a, a part on there too is called extra Weatherville time. So this time is where other deputies, not MSP or any other departments, come to the village and either patrol or um, take a complaint, like some of the other ones that they've taken, so they put that on. And in the in the month of May, they, there was 19.3 extra hours of patrol time in, in the village here. Um, different types of responses we went to. We went to a child abuse complaint. Um, None of these other ones. Uh, two school calls, and that was about it. Um, the new list has critical response, overdoses, shootings, homicides, robberies, assaults, sexual assault pursuits, and mental health calls. And those are just ones that we didn't have this year or this month. Uh, one thing I did want to talk to everybody about and, and make aware about a new law that's coming in, or an updated law that's coming into effect on June 30th. So, it's to prohibit, the law is to update um, what we can do with phones and stuff and mobile devices in our cars. Um, and what that does is restrict us from holding it while we're driving. Um, Traffic up to your car and comes through the speaker system, that's allowed. That's allowed. You can't hold it, swipe. So, I'll read the definition. It says hold means to physically support any part, support with any part of your hand, arms, or shoulders. So it's got a list of things um, uh, that you know you can and cannot do. But the thing that's really going to be um, looked upon is that it was on something stationary and you weren't holding it up, talking like this. If you're going to talk on your phone. It needs to be on some sort of mount on your, you know, you can use stuff that is inside the car. Um, uh, what's that? How about resting it on your lap? Um, I think, uh, I'll just uh, see if I can find that part. Uh, well, it says you can have, uh, use equipment permanently installed on your motor vehicle. Um, if it's in your lap, I mean, are you going to be able to justify that, that you're not putting it in your hand somehow? Basically, we're going to have to see it in your hand. If it's on your lap, I'm not going to see it. Mm -hmm. But if you get in a crash and it's not on something, then it's going to look like you had it in your hand and you were distracted. Mm -hmm. So put it somewhere in a mount in something that is, uh, um, so it's out of your hand. So. You know, with technology today, you can literally see everything that's going on the phone. If there's a crash, if something happens and we take your phone and download it, we can literally look at everything you touched prior to that crash. Mm -hmm. So 
it's best just to put it on that mount, put it down somewhere. Um, if it's seen up, I don't even have to see that you have, that you've done anything on it. I just gotta see it like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a valid stop. Um, let's see. I keep mine in my first side. I didn't, I didn't. There you go. So you can operate it with the stuff that's in the car, Bluetooth, and that's what they're recommending. Right. Um, yeah. Some of the exemptions, of course, are emergency personnel within the scope of our duties. Um, if you're driving down the road and you see a crash, of course you can do that. Um, using global positioning, you know, GPS and whatnot. Uh, but again, the key to all of these exceptions is the, the electronic device is placed in a mount used in a manner described in the manners. So touching, swiping real quick is good, mm -hmm. but holding is not. Yeah. Okay, whereas before, you weren't supposed to text, but you could maneuver some things, mm -hmm. which was still being a problem. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, and then another one, a couple of cool things for school buses. Um, uh, school buses cannot, uh, drivers and commercial motor vehicle drivers also cannot. And, and a key thing for commercial motor vehicles and school buses, I thought this was interesting. Um, where is it? I highlighted it here. Uh, uh, the above definition, uh, let's see, use a motor or a uh, it includes reaching for a mobile electronic device in a manner that requires a driver to maneuver so that he can no longer see the road. So, I mean, if you got to reach over and get it, you know. Anyways, I just thought that was interesting. Uh, and then next, the uh, other part of the bus, bus stuff is, uh, um, I think this is, well, I guess if they did amend it, is nobody can enter a school bus unless you're a pu uh, student, someone affiliated with the school, or basically you've been authorized to be on there at some point. And so I think that that's kind of cool that, because you get rando people sometimes just walking in there to talk to the talk to the bus drivers, and and I think that's good, that's a, that's a civil infraction. Um, and then also um, impeding the progress or operation of a bus. So apparently somebody's stood in front of a bus and stopped. That's why they make these laws, right? Because somebody does this. So I, I thought those were pretty cool and, and good, uh, good, good additions. And I think this is a good addition too because it's as far as the holding the phone or electronic device while driving. You know, it, it's too hard to, you know, if somebody's texting me to, I'm not going to go through their phone, and most people don't want to do that anyways because it gets into a fight. So now if you just see it, it's a ticket to civil infraction. So these are available uh, to view. It's just the MS, uh, Michigan State Police Legal Updates. Uh, you can go on their website uh, and find these exact things. Um, and then just look up, uh, let's see what's the website, uh, michigan.gov slash msp slash uh, dash legal, and you'll be able to get exactly this. So if you're interested, um, I definitely would um, look into that, that way you're aware, but June 30th is when this goes into effect. And um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good resource. And if you ever need to look up something, you can always go into whatever search engine, type MCL, and whatever you're looking for. Yeah, yeah. Michigan compiled laws. So MCL, and you want to find out if it's illegal to raise goats somewhere, but raising goats, you know what I mean? So it can, it's literally anything, and it gives you at least something close to that. Uh, that's all I got. You guys got anything? Yes, sir. I, I have a request from Mike McEwen. He is over on, uh, since the Main Street shut down, they're using North Summit Street quite a bit now. Okay. North Summit Street, so the one to the yes. west. Of, yep. And he just wondered if we can do a little bit more patrolling on that because they have, they're running down through there quite fast. Okay. So it's one thing, I wish I had his address, but he's right there, what, second stop sign from the well. He's the uh, uh, corner of Beach and just just north of the beach and uh, 
and the <coughs> region summit, the region summit. So, so if you get, when you get here, if you just check a couple times, I either want to direct where you're at, just check that. Yeah, and that's cool that I can patrol a little more heavily on on the service roads. What will be your hours now in the village and school right now? I'm going to keep the same hours. However, I am um, over this next. Uh, uh, matrix is what we call it. My next schedule, I put some Saturdays in there, so I'll be working like uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, mm -hmm. and then have like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, whatever it is, and then there'll be some time to know what I put in the Saturday. But I'm just going to keep the keep the same hours. Okay. Yeah. Saturdays would be good. Yep, and yeah, that was requested by a couple people, so mm -hmm. I was fine with that, but I didn't want to have my hours all over the place. That, that just sort of wrecks me. So, I we the village is missing the eighty hours. I can tell there's just a little bit more acceleration, just a little bit, yeah, you know, in different areas. And, and I know we'll patiently wait till you guys get more deputies. Yeah. Is there any residents that have any question for Deputy Chris? Not at this point. Okay. Does so everybody feel sufficient with the hours that we got from the sheriff's department? You feel that you got the right. How many days a week are we going to have a coverage? You get 40 hours a week. That didn't answer my question. That's How many true. days a week? Days I work 10 I hours. 10 hours a day. That means there's three days that we don't have coverage in the village? You have out county coverage. So, like I said, the extra patrol time is what other deputies are here doing. So, I've talked to several of them and they drive through here or they post up at one of the um post up in a, a parking lot or something and patrol uh patrol they do stationary patrol to watch traffic and they're taking complaints as well but yes uh it is four days that i'm here it is possible there might be a sunday with no police officer yes. right i understand that yeah <clears throat> but yeah I, i'm railroad i thought of trying to figure out how to get up another speed sign just something that yeah that would be uh, a good thing i think we got the speed sign coming in from the east, but if we could get one coming in from the west, I think that'd be great. Um, I mean, all I can do is move, all we have is that one. I know. You're um, talking about one of them. And they, the digital ones? Anything. Oh, and so, they have those solar ones, and they're about, uh, about $5,000. Are they? Yeah. Is it actually that one that the, I see one in this one town that is solar, and it stays on? It yeah, works. stays on all the time. But I mean, you never have to do anything with it. You know, you don't have to take the battery like you know, the one is down for two out. down for two days charge um to charge the battery. So they take just about twelve hours to charge each each battery bag. Is there any like empty cars there at the station? All it takes is a decoy. Yeah, and our <laughs> captain Andy Danzer, he has really put out a lot of information to the other out county guys to be out here and and so they're aware and, and they are coming out here i've talked to several people in fact uh some citizens have even come up to me like hey i saw yeah. i don't know if it was you but i saw one of your guys' cars out here and i saw a trooper's car out here so i know people are out here they're doing things so well hopefully we get through this and then get more than yeah we get back to you. yeah definitely and he, he he knows your concern and, and understands that and <clears throat> And we appreciate you guys working with us. Okay. Um, but if we don't have the people to fill the spot, then I guess we don't have the people to fill the spot, which is unfortunate. Another area that stands right there in front of the fire hall. Yeah, I've been hitting, uh, I sit at that parking uh, uh, or at that church there. I don't know if they go from one stop sign to another to see how fast they can go, but it's expensive now that school is out. Like, you mean uh, north, and north of the. Uh, Railroad tracks. Railroad tracks. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. They hit them railroad tracks. Yeah. Metal. Yeah, well, it's right so there. It's only north, north or south. 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 Yeah, I've got a couple people out there. Yeah, right there. Like there. Yeah. Um, Actually, I got one there. guy. Uh, is he? Uh, he was doing 55 through. Uh, I didn't get the radar until he was in the 40, but. He's still doing 55 through town, so well, they were right. I gave him 15 over. So I get concerned right there in front of 
on West Walnut Road in front of the fire hall because I have a neighbor and her little boy is autistic. So, mm -hmm. and he doesn't think anything about coming out of the house and he doesn't look and it yeah. really concerns me. We all keep an eye out. Yeah. But it's only gonna take a second. Yeah. And unfortunately, they do that when I'm not there. So even when I sit there, it's, well, we're gonna go 20 now. Yeah, we pretty much formed our own little neighborhood watches. Mm -hmm. And you know, you guys, there's things you guys can do. Um, like, and I, I suppose the really would, you guys as the Board of Trustees would have to approve it, but a lot of towns, they get like, there's like this colorful street paint that you can get and write slow or 25 or something on there. I'm not going to say that that's a... I want uh, to, you, yeah. you know, well, that'd be on you guys. Yeah. I wanted to do that as a citizen. Yeah. Because of the way they run up and down chestnut. Mm -hmm. That'd be on you guys, but I think um, some of that, you know, might help. Reflective paint might help. I mean, plus it gets the community out and the good community event. Maybe get some of those. Little kid signs, they just take yeah. it out the yeah. room. Signage. Yeah. Helps. Car would not use them. A car would not use them if the window's black. Okay. <laughs> okay. I get a lot of front window tent too. Yeah. yeah. I wrote two of those the last few yeah. days. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They are illegal, right? You can only have four inches down on your front three windows. Right. So. Uh -huh. The side windows, I mean, I'm not going to pick that battle. I'll, I'll pull them over if I really want to, but it's the front end that I'm, I'm really writing on. So, yeah. um, but I, yeah, I, I've written quite a few of those front tent windows, and either they pay them or they pull it off. You know, so they can pay it. It's a waivable, waivable thing. Right. So they can pay it or pull it off. I think it's like 150 dollars or something. Mm -hmm. So like, it just depends on how important it is for you to have a front tent window. Yeah. How many times you want to pay for it? I wonder how much a sign is to like when you have a disabled child, you know, in the neighborhood. Uh, there's there's website you can find find that information on. The signs aren't terribly expensive. Um, and see, there's a little three year old that lives catty corner from our house, and if she sees me outside, she's Gone because she knows she can get a hospital. Oh, yeah. And she does not look. No. She's three. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, I come flying down off the yeah. porch looking for cars. Mm -hmm. Well, train, you know, it's all about training. All right, yeah, teach them. Thank you, Dr. Chris. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you. All right, let's move on to our deputy. PPW report that we need, Mr. Report. I even can. Good. Uh, most of the normal day-to-day -day stuff. Um, Mystics have really increased with the uh, with Comcast putting the lines in and stuff. Um, the big thing has been was the village picnic and the uh, the Main Street project. Main Street project is moving right along. Um, <clears throat> we found a couple lines that we weren't exactly sure where they were at, um, which is a good thing. Um, everything's been, they haven't hit anything yet, and they've been getting main on the ground. They're all the way up to, from Beach Street, they've got the Beach Street intersection done, and they're, they're all the way up to, uh, past the school, almost the party store, so. We've got the, the main end, they'll be, uh, um, pressure testing it and, uh, and we'll back to test it and then we'll go back through and put the services in and do the tie ins. So, but that's been uh, keeping an eye on that's been put a lot of work. So, um, also, I our lagoon, um, I'm waiting on a proposal. Uh, the duckweed has blown right up in one of the lagoons and is about to in another one. Um, we're probably going to have to treat it with the sonar. Uh, and because the state came out last fall and noticed the, <clears throat> there was quite a bit of duckweed and some coontail that was uh, growing up, coontails of uh, weed that 
grocery to buy them up and then there's some floating weeds so uh, we're probably going to have to two to three lagoons one lagoon is not too bad uh, the other three are one definitely well, two definitely and then one's kind of iffy but I think we all three should be done is that something you have to chemically treat? Is can you physically remove it, or is that not fix the problem? Uh, I mean, if you're talking about physically removing like our small saloons, four acres. Well, I didn't know if it was something you could just like get a, a net and a couple of skips and just. Uh, not really. Okay. No, it's uh, and, uh, and there, there's a there's a whole time on it. Uh, if it's done. Before July, um, if it's treated before July, then we can discharge. I think in October, there's like a 110 day holding period where you can't discharge water out of it. You got to let it naturally uh, work on chemicals and, and then itself break down before you can discharge it into a receiving stream. So gotcha. um, that's probably something here that I'll, once I get the quote back from them, um, I know it's probably not going to be cheap, but it's the state has already said that it needs to be done. So um, I'll be bringing that to council here in the next few weeks, probably. And that's about it. Um, I'll keep asking. Any dump truck updates? Still looking? Still looking. Okay. I've. Uh, we have, we have an order in at DNK Lansing. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a single axle truck order in through. That's the one that's 300 days out, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have it until July of 2024. But, right. And then uh, Truck and Trailer out of Hollow, which we work with, they're aware of it. They'll watch it come down the assembly line because they're the one that'll assemble it once it gets mm -hmm. built from Frank Lyon. <coughs> Is that pretty much the plan at this point? It can be. So it's in. And, and I want to say Minima or whatever, you know, the municipality discount. This mm -hmm. is how that's followed through. So that price is set. And then Truck and Trailer's got it set. So it's coming through, it's got our name on it. So we can A or name when it gets closer to see if we found something differently. But at least we got it in the foot. <coughs> right. So this one's coming. The one is at the transmission needs to be pulled and repaired and put back in. But the other one is somewhat okay but we still i think our best bet buckley michigan they have a really good uh, we just missed that one but i keep thinking my fingers are crossed with buckley michigan the guy is really good about getting single axle dump trucks in a nice shape they come from minnesota wisconsin area interesting it is but it's uh but it, it, it is ordered. I got the engine, the transmission, the single axle, everything. We're not going to put anything on the front. It'll be a bottom blade, mm -hmm. and it'll be a stainless box. And uh, yeah, it's like 187, just under $200,000. Will, will we be okay for this upcoming winter if we can't get anything until that? Until I, think that? So. I think so. Okay. I do, I do think we can do that. and. Well, yeah, I, I, you know, with, with what we have now, assuming it's still working, I, I say that because I've been under it, so I know where I'm looking at and how many brake lines we've already replaced. So, mm -hmm. um, the deal with the tractor, I almost to back up that the day we still got the tractor out the DPW garage and we keep keep thinking, keep looking, and keep asking for the transmission. And I feel like before fall, we'll have a transmission and put the same tractor back together that we. Seem like we keep not getting something for sidewalks. Mm -hmm. I mean, how actively are we looking? What about the sidewalks? Are we going to get a four wheeler to? Well, at this point, it's we're just idling. But I'm saying that the more time we're by, the more we have more chances of getting the transmission that we need for that tractor. I mean, the question though is, do we really want to spend that amount of money to repair a twenty-year-old tractor? It's about half of what we were thinking. The couple people I've talked to, so they've been. Oh, so it'd be only like a four thousand dollar instead of eight thousand. It'd be only like eighteen hundred bucks or something like that. Oh, under two. That's not too bad, man. All right, and I, and to put it back together, I took it apart, so you know how it goes back together. It's not you know, right. 
half a day, it doesn't take that much to put it back together. Okay. Mike has a few parts in it. No, I had it right away in our hand. But. Any schedule for the Elm Road hydrant replacement or no? Still. We've got. Uh, I know you got your hands tied with. Yeah, and we've. Uh, Ryan has been out for about a month. Um, he's slipped a disc in his back, so mm -hmm. we don't really have any. So it's. Gotcha. We're back to the three of us again, so. Yeah. Um, three of us again. <laughs> well, you won't like my next question, but I haven't seen it brought up. I don't expect it to be done tomorrow, but is there any plan to paint the exterior of the pump houses? Yes. Oh, there is. Yeah, okay. I, I, that's one of the things that's on the board is um, we, we painted the, the inside and I'm hoping to, uh, we'll take the back truck down there with the high pressure um, hose and blow them off and then mm. we'll color it. What? Take what they are now. Yeah, I just noticed the one on the south side is getting a little... Yeah. Eh. Yeah, it's kind of grungy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 it's really open, if, you know, just another person to take up a lot of the slack and then we can bring somebody up to do that, but up am just going to try and just do it piece by piece, you know, paint when I can and... Right. But yeah, no, I, yeah, I planned on painting them. We, we've done the inside of them. Uh, for the most part, there's a couple spots because we we went through and we had the BFDs put in and stuff, and there's you know there's a path through there um, on the floor. Um, well, house three, everything's been painted, all the piping's been painted, but I haven't got the floor painted in there yet. So really, the the my main focus was getting the the piping painted because 55 degree water and 70 degree weather and the pipe sweat and paper so yeah. we did that in the winter time and then i'm hoping that you know during the summertime we can get some of the some of the exterior painted up so cool that's good to know yeah <coughs> just wear three hats and then you can just take a hat on <laughs> okay any more for the detail report no does ryan think you close we don't know just don't know so, Jessica, can the clerk try the report? Uh, committee technically is Friday and it went pretty well for it being our first time since 2019. Um, organization downstairs, the one on the ongoing process, we don't know how long. Copier installed. How does it work? It worked pretty well. It's a lot of good news too. Um, utility bills, usual non payments, non fulfilled payments, plans have been, been very strict on it and have been pretty successful. American Legal Publishing, we received our inserts for our ordinance books and the ordinance books should be current. Um, taxes, those should be going up June 30th. We're in the process of that now. Audit, we should be kicking that off the week of July 11th. So with the community picnic, I saw a lot of people that were, you know, happy and of course I had people come up to me. And what I'm wondering is maybe for next year for community picnic, if maybe we could have like a committee. Because I did have some people that said, Hey, I would have loved to have been part of that. Or I would have loved to have a committee because that was a lot to do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or I would love to have volunteered. So maybe if we could like form a committee, it would take so all much of responsibility off yes, of her trying to do saying. her job and all of that. Absolutely. The yes. DDA had an SPC, which is a special planning committee, but they ended up disbanding that because nobody, they even talked to the big pots, but never talked yeah. through. And that's what I'm saying. A committee makes it so much easier when you have more right. people that are part of it and you can delegate. Why not? Uh, the guys got very stressed out. Right. And I mean, I'd be happy to be part of it and helping. And, you know, somebody can do like the kids' games and delegate who can do what and everything. And like the dunk tank, of course, they have. that he was a good sport, but he got cold. And, you know, maybe we could put that like in a different spot where we could fill it up prior to let the water warm up. And maybe if it wasn't on a corner, because when the kids were throwing the balls, they were going out in the street, and some of them did try and go after it, because that's just what they want to do. A kid throws the ball, and they want to go after it. And I was concerned, as well as Sam was, you know, that they might get hit, so maybe 
you know, it's just if we can have that committee, mm -hmm. and then if people from our community, because it is about the community, if they want to volunteer and help, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. And another idea that was brought up to me was um, possibly donating to the food bank. Yes. The car show people suggested that we could get, they would give two dollars or bring a bag of cans or box food or whatever and donate it to the food bank. And they would more than willing to do that. Yeah, and the our food bank can always. There was a few people in cars that came through. How much is it? Yeah. It's free, right? Yeah. Oh, they, they seem kind of surprised and almost disappointed that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Why not let them donate to the food bank where we can and either give back be, more? Yeah. And that would really help the community. Yeah. And possibly talk to maybe the high school to where we can hold it there to where there's a bigger spot. And then we don't have to shut down the river and about the traffic and right. people can spread out and stuff like that. Right. Um, get bouncy house. Yeah. Mm. Some little yeah. kid game. Things like yeah, that. Yeah, put it out in the grass over there. I'll do that. Just write them down. Got a year to plan. I've already heard. That's what I'm saying. Great. Delegate. 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 Mm -hmm. More people involved, the better. <coughs> Okay. Uh, everybody see what happened with our little downtown development authority report. I know Josh Rocky didn't get anything. Okay. No. The building and zoning report. Looks like Jim has been poking away at that. Um Lisa report. Um, so we had our weekly meeting on Thursday and um we're just waiting hear back from Josh. I was going to ask him tonight if he had any more information for us mm -hmm. to take to the DDA or to Lisa from the DDA, but um, I guess I will catch him sure. on the phone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. We are now to Scott Gold, our attorney. All right. So, so White Rose, I called the circuit court to ask what was going on and make sure there wasn't something that I, they were waiting on me for. Uh, and I was informed by the clerk of Wanda Stokes Court that Miss Stokes has been on leave uh, for some time and will likely be on leave for another month. So the appeal that's still pending between uh, uh, Weberville and White Rose is hanging out there. They said that they're extremely backed up because of this recent leave, but that they'll get to it as soon as possible. So that's still in limbo, and all those other subsequent tickets, I suspect, are just waiting for the circuit court to rule. And I suspect once a ruling is provided by the circuit court, some of the subsequent tickets will kind of fall in line. Um, so I, as to that matter, uh, we're at least for another month, just hanging in the wind. Uh, I did get a call from the district court. Um, it looks like they're getting their files organized. Um, I got to get uh, an abatement order over to them. I believe I already sent it to them, but I'll, uh, I'll confirm that yet tomorrow. And it won't have any real ramifications because we're waiting on so many other things. Um, Jamie Horde's sentence date is still set for June 26th, as far as I know. Um, I have not received any letters. I haven't called the prosecutor to see if they have, but if anyone has any letters and they want to either submit them to the prosecutor or give them to me, I'll get them to the prosecutor. Uh, but again, we need to get those in at least by the end of next week, because not this Monday, but the following Monday is the 26th. Um, I did receive the MML um, bond information. Um, it's uh, I need a, it's a sworn statement, proof of loss that we have to submit to the MML uh, in order to collect on the bond. Still at this moment, 
Uh, the MML is saying that they are covering $54,860.75 because of the duration of time when the bond took effect and when it concluded. And they're trying to say that uh, the losses experienced by Weberville in that one year period was the 54,000 and change. Um, I still believe it's problematic because this was an ongoing and concealed effort by Jamie Horton. Um, so what I figure is we can sign this sworn statement here since I'm here with you guys and um, I'll make contact with MML again to try and confirm that there is truly this is the only option we have um, and I'll provide that to you guys to review. The um, next matter is Alpha Omega. Um, I know that's been an ongoing issue. Jim Wright's been pursuing it. Uh, it's become rather contentious, much like White Rose. I almost wonder if White Rose and um, Alpha Omega are talking or something like that because the, there's been a handful of threats that several business owners are upset and that they're uh, uh, trying to organize themselves again to put together some litigation. I think it's just saber rattling. Um, we're well within our uh, rights as a community, the, the local governing body to enforce local code. Uh, I think it's just a, we just so happen to have a couple business owners that want to do it their way and only their way. Um, I have been um, in contact with the attorney for Alpha Omega. Uh, he wrote that, he wrote me a letter uh, subsequent to my letter. Uh, my letter to Alpha Omega was simply that um, we still want to engage. We're trying to diffuse any contentious matters, that we welcome business, but we need to have some compliance here. And that's when the uh, attorney for Alpha Omega wrote me and just said that uh, he's going to meet with uh, Mr. Hunt and that he'd get back to me and we'll try to figure out how this is going to go forward. Um, but again, I, as far as I'm concerned, we are well within our parameters of what our obligations are. Jim Wright has been doing what Jim Wright's supposed to be doing. Um, but it, it got highly contentious to the point where I advised um, the president and Jim Wright not to enter the property because Jim, uh, uh, Steve Hunt told me that he would forcibly remove any village agent from his property. Now, he didn't go on and elaborate how he would remove somebody. It was implied that it was very much be forceful, um, but with the uh, given safety, I, you know, I don't know what that extreme is. So, uh, FYI to any village agent that um, if there's an issue with Alpha Omega, I advise that the president be contacted or myself, and that uh, we just make sure that nobody gets hurt until we can kind of diffuse this contentious matter. I'm uh, hoping to have some resolve with that shortly. Um, got a letter from Gabridge just acknowledging that they are doing the audit. Um, I've got to disclose whether or not uh, we have any pending litigation on the horizon. Outside of the code enforcement, which is a civil matter technically, it feels criminal, but it is a civil matter. I'm just going to disclose that. But as far as any other litigation, I'm not aware of anything. And so if anyone has been threatened or been told uh, that there's going to be litigation and that information came to you by way of the fact that you're an agent effectively of the village, please let me know. I need to get this letter off to Gabriel here shortly. Nothing urgent, but I'd like to get it out end of the week, beginning of next week. Um, Otis Elevator, I see that there was some bids brought in, but I guess I'll defer until you guys have a conversation about that. Other than that, I have not spoke with Otis. I've been informed that Otis did, in fact, show up last week, maybe? Mm -hmm. This week, last week? And perform their contracted service. Um, but I guess that will have to go to further conversation with the council as to what they want to do going forward. And that's really all I have for an update at the moment. So back to uh, the White Rose issue, I see a note in here, uh, I believe from Jim's report, that there's a uh, court order um, from the district court that the defendant 
cease and desist the occupancy of any building on that property. Is that accurate? That is correct. And I'm assuming they're appealing that? Yes. Okay, so that's... So it's in a state of limbo. I mean, yeah. we, we really can't act on it. And But is that to apply to every single building? On that property, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, every building that doesn't have a, uh, a certificate of occupancy. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't right. have all the details, but I suspect it's all of them. Right. I mean, I can get to the details. I just I don't have I don't have well, like you said, it's, it's in limbo. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Is there any way that all we're going to resolve? Why the courts are that tied up? So this is not top priority to this. Well, it's Wanda Stokes. It's been assigned to her, and uh, given that she's on medical leave, I don't know when she went on. I don't know if she's been on leave for a month or two months now. Um, I've never seen anything like quite like this, but being that the court advised me that she'll be out for another 30 days at least, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know how else to really push them along. Um, I would think at some point they would have to start redelegating the cases to the people that are up, showing up to work, you know, so. And, that, and the problem is the hierarchy of this litigation across all the White Rose matters, um, I suspect that's why the lower courts, like district courts, probably not addressing the appeals of these subsequent tickets because they're waiting for the higher courts to say up or down on the first litigated matter. Because so many of the subsequent tickets are pretty much in line with how the fight started. So. Sorry to report, but it looks like at least another 30 days before we get anything. That's that's if depending on where, where we're at and the docket from when she left. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, where uh, is that engineer report? We're we going to do that when we get into your program. Well, yeah, just a couple of things. Um, obviously, one of them is under new business item one, the category B application, and I put a packet on your desk. Yep. And I'll go over that at that time. Uh, the other thing is, as Sean or as Shane noted to you, the Main Street project is underway. I have an inspector out there full time, Eric Dibel. If anybody's got any questions, you'll see him around with a PEA hard hat and vest on. And you know, feel free to ask him questions. Um, I know he and Shane talk quite regularly, and uh, and I do as well. Um, we're pretty pleased with the contractor at this point. The work is pretty orderly. They are very well organized, and it's relatively easy if somebody gets into the workspace to be able to get through it without any real hassles. I mean, we don't want people in there just from a safety point of view. That's where the detours are up. But, uh, um, you know, they are taking care to make sure that people's driveways are accessible and open. And um, so far, we haven't heard any complaints. So okay. that's it. Thank you. Okay. Um, it didn't come up here specifically tonight, but uh, a number of folks in the community asked me. So, really, this is for the folks listening at home. Um, a lot of people have been wondering about the go live for Comcast because they ran all those wires and haven't connected them. And I, I reached out to Ben, the Com Comcast rep. Today, actually, I heard back from them that they're still projecting uh, two of the five nodes to go live by the end of this week. So I'm not sure who that would actually service, um, but the remaining three nodes um, are being held up for permitting from DTE for usage on the poles as well as the drain commission. So it's anybody's guess as to how long it, it will take for the permitting process to go through um, he didn't really seem to know, and that's not really a reasonable thing for him to, to know anyway. But I just wanted to give a, an update on that. We were told when I was talking to them mm -hmm. that they were looking at the end of June, yep. July, to go figure out the That's there. accurate for part of it. Yeah. <laughs> not the whole thing. Right. So. Okay. So, category B funding resolution on our new business, number one. 
So this is a little packet that Ale and Boyer print. So what I've given you, if I may, yes. is a draft packet. Um, as we had discussed at the last meeting, we are submitting two applications, and I have updated this packet of information. Still have a little bit of editing to do, but in this packet there are the two applications. One is for $175,000 construction cost, and the other one is $340,000. The combined total is a little bit less than what I had originally estimated. The reason being, I've been working with um, Reed Riley, who is a paving contractor, and so they've given me some more real-world numbers. And so um, what this would mean is that you would be talking about a total construction cost of $515,000, of which the village would have to match 50% in total, which is the $257,500. Um, included in this packet are the two applications, the map that's requested, photos that are requested, and also the cost estimate, which is the last sheet. And the cost estimate is also broken up into two parts, uh, the, the portion for the uh, portion of Highview Drive that we're asking for a two-inch pavement overlay on because that's the more deteriorated part of Highview Drive and then the remainder of the business park. So this would get, uh, assuming that the grant is, is uh, application is accepted and the money's dispersed, that this would result in a new pavement overlay throughout all of the business park with the exception of the new part of Tech Drive, which was built in the last couple of years. So the resolution I think that I give, had given you the last time is, is the correct format. The only thing that would change is the dollar figure. I think I, in the draft resolution I had given you, I had something like $320,000. Um, that would have been a match. And so, you know, we can correct that to 257,500, uh, which would be your um, your cost to contribute of the 50% match. So, um, that's essentially it. If anybody's got any questions? Oh, by the way, this is due. The application is due Thursday at five o'clock, June 15th. So that's why it's on the agenda this evening. Uh, for the resolution. Remind me again, this is for 2024, 2025. Uh, thank you for mentioning that, Sam. Uh, we had originally suggested that this be submitted for one application for 2024 and one for 2025. I think we got word from Caitlin at Plant Moran that all everything for 2024 would be great. Do I understand that correctly? Yeah. So we, are, I, I do have an editorial change to make to the one application that notes it as to be 2024 instead of 2025. So. Right. And that also reduces risk of any inflationary costs. Correct. To run in 25. Yes. Perfect. And just for my own reference, um, in the business part on Highview Drive, when you go down to Tech Drive, if you at that intersection there is the rest of that road, uh, SA Automotive's property that's not Village Road? Yes. So that's a private drive? So where Tech Drive is, it's headed south toward the SA and then it turns and goes past the, uh, the uh, marijuana facilities, the cannabis facilities. Mm -hmm. That piece of road that continues south that has, does not have curb and gunner on it is their driveway. That yeah. driveway. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so with that said, on our new business, we need to category B funding resolution. So we need to pending resolution application. So we need to accept what we need a motion to accept the application as presented by Alan Boyer. I make a motion to approve the adoption of the Category B funding resolution for the 2024 year as presented by the PEA group. 
I will second that. Any discussion? Alan Boyd, do you think that sums it? Do we need, yep, all the heads are in, right? Okay. Um, Thanks, and no discussion. Roll call, please. Shorty? Yes. Shorty? Yes. Daniel? Yes. Walter? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, with that said, then we need a motion from the council to also accept town board to send these applications in as presented in front of us, also as presented in this packet. So we can just say it. So move. So moved. Second. Second by law. Any discussion? So what this meant was that we understand that this application that Alan Boyer sent us in this little packet, that we as the council understand this application to get sent in so we can get our 50% match and get the grant money. To make it still turn us down. That's right. Yeah. yeah there's no guarantees. Right. Yeah. 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 Fingers crossed. Okay. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Walter? Yes. Okay, elevator folks, Great Lakes Elevator American Accessibility Patent. You are up to Yep, so uh, at a number of meetings ago discussing the, uh, I guess, replacement for the Otis Elevator contract, uh, I reached out to Great Lakes Elevator uh, here in Williamston. Uh, very kind people over the phone. I, it seems like they'd be a, uh, a pretty good fit for us. So uh, what's in the packet tonight uh, would be payments on a quarterly basis for five years, similar to the current Otis contract uh, at a cost of $200 uh, per quarter. Uh, so that's $800 per year. Um, I believe if I recall correctly, uh, it would be out here They would periodically inspect and lubricate uh, any of the main motors, relays, resistors, condensers, etc. Uh, repair or replacement of worn and defective items. Uh, they would do an annual uh, weight test, and I believe this is for quarterly uh, maintenance. Um, interestingly, uh, it did not prompt us at all. They, they asked if we had a current contract. Um, and they asked if it was uh, why we wanted out of this contract and I said Otis and said oh have they not been showing up because we get a lot of those calls mm -hmm. so it would seem as though uh, we're in a similar boat um, to a lot of other folks um, I also asked if they are able to provide uh, new, new elevator installations and retrofits which they're familiar with both um, I made mention that we were at some point told that our elevator could not be replaced or repaired if it were to break again and she kind of chuckled and said we've heard that before we can if you need a new elevator we can get you a new elevator. okay those are the folks i talked to mr peterson is present um american accessibility technologies um who basically stated it would be $120 per quarter, um, $250 per year annual rate for tested governors and safeties and oil buffers. Uh, he also stated that if we needed a new elevator, he would not have a problem being able to put one in. Um, anything else you can add to this? My name is Eric Peterson, the uh, contractor in Murphy Accessibility. Um, the elevator you have um, is a very free looking device. The space that's accorded within that viceway um, will not allow a new elevator. But I can tell you, as the person that's installed more of that product there in the state than anybody else, that every single part on that elevator is available. So 
a replacement within that hoist wave would never be, should never be necessary within most of our careers. Um, it's an excellent piece of equipment. I mean, all the parts are available off the shelf. Um, that was one of the, the better parts of that product was if there wasn't anything that was going to go obsolete on you. So, um, the uh, Cat 1 or annual test that uh, we charge $250 for is in, is in lieu of a full one. So you would not get charged for the $125 for the full one, you charge, get charged for the $250. So um, I want to say that uh, Scott Simmons is a friend of mine and he's a great mix of a phenomenal company. Otis is a great company. You may not like them right now. You may not like them when you're dealing with them, but they didn't get as big as they are by not putting out some extremely much product. Their problem is, just like everybody else in the industry, there's not enough mechanics, licensed mechanics available. So it's very, very difficult to get licensed men in the state of Michigan. And so they're behind all the time on almost every single well, except for the airport and Red Sen and you know, the big money ones where they, they've got people there full time. So you, you know, the service you're getting from Otis, um, you know, if the state comes and writes you up, uh, because you don't have, they haven't been in, in here on time, that's that's the biggest, you know, that's where you get ahead, because you get a, a charge from the state. Um, and they don't tend to want to give you back money that you've already paid them. Um, so, uh, we love to have your business. We're local in Palo Scott's local in Williamson. Uh, I actually do business with, with Scott. Uh, so if you either pick either one, you're, you're going to, I think, you're going to get a short seat either way. Once you get out of the Otis contract. So if I'm reading this right, this uh, this contract is renewed on an annual basis? We, we, renew, we allow renewal on an annual basis. Okay, so it's not like this other contract, which would be for five years. And, no, and okay. if, you know, if you talk to Scott, he would change that as well. It's not, um, Otis likes to get you into what's called a five by five contract. And you've got a five year contract and then you've got a 30 day window, 90 days before the contract ends to send them a letter, a certified letter telling them that they're no longer contracting with them. And so nobody ever remembers that 30 day window. 90 days before the contract. So um, they just roll over five years, five years, five years. 25 years into a con into it, like, how did how the price get this high and, and why are we, you know, why aren't they showing up? So, so any questions? I, I just wanted to hear right. Sam, you're saying that Great Lakes gave a, the five year contract? Yeah, so my understanding. Um, yeah, this, this agreement shall be for a term of five years, commencing on 1201 midnight, um, five years from, from start date. Obviously, that's not fitted because we don't have start date yet. Um, agreement shall be renewed automatically for an additional term of three years unless terminated by written notice by either party, uh, marked at least 90 days prior to the end of the term. Next up. We're a small family company. If you don't want us here, we're not going to be here. And I just want to make sure I was understanding. I just want to make sure I understood from Sam which it was. Thank you. I, I just have a question with the Otis contract. Can you get out of the Otis contract? Is nothing else? Well, that's just it. Um, if the village is inclined to go a different direction other than Otis, then I need to sever the contract with Otis. And so before. Uh, the village can even vote to take on a new vendor, a new service provider. Uh, we've got to officially terminate the contract with Otis. And uh, to be quite, I don't know what their pushback would be. Um, I think we do have grounds to terminate the contract. Uh, but technically, I wouldn't want the village to effectively enter into another contract. And then, worst case scenario, you're obligated to pay two service providers right. at the same time. So. How long um, is Otis contract left on? I think it just rolled over not too long ago. So I think in, technically we've got probably upwards of four, if not five years left to go. Because um, I think it just rolled maybe in the last year or something like that, off the top of my head. 
but can we not terminate based on the fact that they did not follow through with what was in the contract? Well, I think there's grounds to terminate for sure. Okay. All I'm saying is right now, the last time I spoke to Otis, I just said, hey, look, we've got a problem. We think you're in breach. Uh, their offer to us was to either provide a credit um, or to figure out a way to make the village happy. And I said, well, uh, we need to have a couple of council meetings to discuss this. I did not give them our position at that time because I wasn't sure where we were going. But if the village is so inclined to go a different direction, officially, now that we know that there's service providers readily available and their prices, uh, the, the sequence of steps that I see is that I go to Otis and say, look, we want to terminate the contract. They could say, okay, we understand, that's fine, move on. Or they could say, no way, we're going to keep you to it. And then we got to assess whether or not we want that fight. So um, if the village is inclined to go a different direction than Otis, what I would do then was get on the phone with Otis and say, look, we want out. And if, if it goes smooth by next council meeting, we could vote on a new service provider. Or by next council, I could say, well, we're in a fight <laughs> to get out of the contract. So I guess it's whether or not the village really wants to pursue other vendors. They expect service. to fight. What's that? They expect to fight. Expect to fight, yeah. Well, I tell you, the, my first impression on the phone, um, I, I think everything you said is very accurate. Uh, they seem sincere, that, and they also didn't try and bamboozle me and say, oh, we were there, they were pretty forthright, yeah, we weren't there, and, mm -hmm. and that, but, um, uh, you know, I think we do have grounds to say, hey, you haven't performed as we've been paying you, that's grounds for us to leave, so I guess it just depends on what they say. We've, we've helped successfully help customers get free bonus in the past, TK, Shin, we're all, um, they all fight to the mail, they all have a bevy of lawyers, corporate lawyers that, would love to hold on to those 100 200 hour contracts for some yeah. reason. Uh, but it's because this, the National Elevator Code requires that we keep a log that you've obviously seen, then you know that they haven't been here mm -hmm. and you know that you've already you've actually paid them for the work that they didn't do. Mm -hmm. So you, you've got them if you want to fight them, but it, it's not going to be you know the end of the month or the end of the next month more than likely. It'll, it'll drag out a little while. Yeah. But it's, it's worth Worth the effort. Even whoever you call it. Or if you want to stay with them, it's still worth the effort to clarify with them. Sure. Right. Either way, I would just advise against council to enter into another contract until we know the exact, uh, exi you know, what, what the actual right. status of the current contract is. That's all. I just would hate to have two service providers and two checks going out. <laughs> well, Scott and I both, we don't, we charge you based upon our performance. So when I show up to do the quarterly exam, that's when you get billed. Mm -hmm. You don't get you don't get billed in advance. Uh, I don't believe that Scott does either. So if we don't show up, you don't pay. It's kind of like Benjamin Franklin calling me to see whether we don't show up, you don't pay. Um, same idea. You know, uh, it's fraud in my in my mind. You know, for my my own personal morals, it's fraud for me to, to charge for something that I, that I didn't do. What's the current, do you recall current contract? Is it $300 a quarter? Uh, I believe it's 700 a year. 755 a, a month paid on the quarterly. Okay. And I was a spitball, so 550 times uh, 10 months, or five, 55 times 10 months, 550 plus two more months. Right. About 700 bucks a year. Okay. So it looks like everything's competitive as far as the prices go. There's no oh, yeah. way outlier, so. For sure. Okay, we'll just, uh, what does the council want to do at this point? We want to make sure that what the process would be with Otis before we enter into another. Table to the next meeting? Well, or, I don't want to keep kicking the can down the road. I mean, at some point we have to make a decision of whether or not we, do, we want to fight to get out of the Otis contract or not. I think to Scott's point, we know that there's other providers who can service us readily in a, in a competitive prices, so it's a matter of do we pursue getting out of Otis or not? I think we should. I, I agree with her. I agree. I agree. I think you have I think you have legal grounds to sever the contract, but to the gentleman's point, if they want to fight it, but I, even if their attorney called me and said, Oh no, we're gonna hold you to this thing, I'd say 
okay, so we stand in front of a judge and I say, we paid, you guys didn't show up. <laughs> I mean, and it's a serious issue. I mean, you can't have these elevators just running without any kind of service. So I, it's, it's, it's pretty serious. And I'm not dismissing your point at all. I mean, Otis may play this tooth and nail, but they put themselves in a bad way. Yeah, no, we've been, like I said, we've been very, very successful in helping the customers get, get free of Otis. It's just, the customer has to be willing to put up with, you know, not, a, not every dentist in Ann Arbor or Farmington Hills or whatever has an attorney at their disposal and they at least the town you know paying you the work already. So you have the ability to stay on that a lot of customers get halfway through it and just you know tend to want to give up because it's too much of a hassle. Certainly. So, you, you'll succeed. Um, again, like I said, it, it, the money they took the money and they didn't and they knowingly didn't provide the service and they had breach of contract. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to prove. It's it's more difficult to get it in action. Yeah. I think yeah. I'm with you. It all makes sense. It just sequentially, sequentially speaking, I'm advising the council. We gotta we gotta officially sever that contract. I'd like to make a motion to have uh, our attorney Scott Gold seek termination of our. Elevator maintenance contract with Otis Elevator. I second the motion. Great. Mm -hmm. Discussion? Okay. Roll call. Shoulder? Yes. Sandville? Yes. Walter? Yes. Okay. No. Okay. Now, we're on to number four repairs on GMC crew cab through Franklin Mode Young GMC. Um, Shane and I, we've been, I guess the Sam was saying, keeping the can down the road on his truck. And when the day we stopped in there and you opened up the doors, the rocker panels were completely gone. He tried to get with somebody in Stockbridge to get us a quote. I tried my body shop, uh, young GMC, they're, they're quick. Um, other than they ran into a glitch, you talked to me today. There was some more brackets actually hold the body up on the crew cab was rusted out. I didn't want it to go this far, but the text I got today said that we're having a meeting tonight is $18,707.30. But these are $80,000 pickups. And I looked at it like, can we, and trust me, I, I'm nervous about this because I felt bad. But on the other hand, I knew when you look at our other pickup, it doesn't have the damage that the crew cab does. And, uh, I just, I didn't want to have it, if we traded it in, I don't think we would have got five or six thousand bucks for it, so. Are these both one tons? Three quarter. They're three quarter? Three quarter. And it's, the truck's worth it. It's still sound, it's still, the, the miles is not that many miles on it. It's full wheel drive, it still does its thing. And I felt that we could continue to hold its value. How many miles? One. One? One twenty. One twenty. One twenty. And I, I look at it as like, we, we gotta get a hold of this or it's gonna be a mess. And I, I didn't wanna have that on top of our new semi-truck. So what is the 18? Is that putting a new bracket on the frame for the body mount? They, when they got into it, the, they said, no, it will not exceed 18,707.30. But that, that's to basically make it new again. It will look very yes. And But it's done right. They wouldn't, I give them the VIN number because it was supposed to be under 15. Mm -hmm. We have the VIN numbers so they could buy the, the pieces that they, because we'd set pictures to them. I tried to hunt by shop, you know, and he's like, that's, that's it's gone quite a ways. He's it was like, I got too much going on, I'm not, I'm not interested. When I sat here thinking tonight, I, I didn't think of Nelson's, I should have ran down to Nelson's, but mm -hmm. we've been both communicating that we wanted to get this taken care of. The other pickup doesn't show the signs of no. that one Shane's the driver. Right? Dude. But, uh, Honest question, do we need two three quarter ton trucks? Could we replace the bad one with like a Colorado or everything a half you ton? Pull. No, everything no. you pull, like you pull the asphalt okay. with yeah. that, and then you got the other one's got plow on it. So gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, we need two three quarter tons. Okay. And 120,000 miles on those LSs, they're, they're, they're bulletproof pretty much. <laughs> we, we let it go too far. It, it, yeah. it shouldn't have been that bad. And, it, and if we didn't go any further, it was going to be a mess. Yeah. But it's just 18 grand to get out of the truck. It's, it's, and then again, I, 
But it's only in 2015. I mean, it's not even 10 years old, and it was literally rotting apart. Right. You looked at doors, and we were like panicky. Like, and, and then I thought, oh, what if we pedaled this? What are we going to pedal during that? I assume they're just going to do primer, base coat, clear coat. They're not doing like a rhino lining or any type of. It'll be done very professional. Yeah. I used to know there's while no, they're in there, no if, cut it's, corners. if it's worth doing some sort of undercoating to well, well, I, I just stay off. Well, the Dan. undercoatings don't work. Depends on what you get. Wow, trust me. You just talk to Dan. They have something that they, they um, fluid. Fluid film. Fluid film. It has all sorts of brands of that. And, yeah, and, uh, and the, I know that works pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, but. That would be the only thing that I can think of, but that's probably something that we can do ourselves. Yeah, well, if you got that in spray, you could put that on all our trucks. Yeah, yep. Okay. Yeah, you can get that in 55 gallon drum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they, they picked it up at our, the, our location and they'll bring it back to us. And they would have had it back probably tomorrow if it wasn't for, he said, I. I don't feel comfortable without just buying these cab brackets that will hold up your cab by the frame. He said that you, uh, we went this far. You should do that. So, how's and, I, and I will have pictures for you guys. Yeah, how's the frame look? No problem. But from what just man, yeah, frame doesn't look bad at all. It's just the, they're gonna paint that for us too. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, it'll be it'll be done right. Gotcha. And I again, I want it to be. It was under 15, and we, him and Hod back forth, and, and they they called us said we we got a we got a spot that we can fit and get you in within a, within a week because that's what him and I talked about. We don't want somebody to have this truck for a month. We need this truck back. So we ordered pre ordered the parts. It's all supposed to work. They got into it and they said, look, uh, there's there's some more damage. We need to get it over. And I do have pictures so we can. Body mounts are kind of a safety issue too. Yeah. You know, they don't want to put that out without doing that. No. So young, Young's is not to exceed 15, and your guy, who was now? This this was the guy today from Young, the body shop man. His name's Mike. There's, they oh. have like six mics up there. But he just got the text at uh, 4 17 p.m. Sierra repairs will come in below 20,000 currently at this point, which I'll hold them to at 18,707 30. And I'll just tell him when I call him in the morning, you gotta, you gotta hold it at 18,707 30. So should we say 18,8 just to be on the safe side? Well, my opinion of it is at that price, I'd almost want to see other quotes. I mean, I don't, I don't want to continue to kick the can down the road, but at least we're not in salt season. So if it's another couple months before we, you know, it can get touched, it shouldn't get too, too much worse. But I mean, the I truck is out there. Being worked on at this time. Oh, all the work you find. Okay. Because it was trying to be below 15, and him and I looked at it, and we had a window, and we let's shove it down the, we're done picking the can, and he tried to get it by the stock bridge. I didn't realize they had it already. Yeah, and we couldn't get on a body shop for three because you know, it was too big of a job for him to do. Mm -hmm. The only thing I didn't do, Sam, as I, as I say here tonight, was we could have mentioned something to Nelson to see what, right. they, what they would have had. No, I, 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 I didn't understand that. I heard you say they could pick it up. I didn't really yeah, that they had that. picked it up. You know, I, I pushed this because when I looked at it, I'm like, oh my God. And then we checked. But they've been reasonable on anything I've ever dealt with with them. I, I've never seen them do what's wrong. And you won't be disappointed when it comes back. I mean, that, that's one of the things that they do correctly. They definitely want to make sure that their name stands out there. They don't want to know. Yeah, I, I was assuming and hoping it would stay under 15, and mm -hmm. I started pushing the button, saying, "Hey, look, what are we doing?" He said, and I said, "I need pictures." So I'm, I, I would bet that we'll get it yet this week. So probably get it back. So try to move forward and make it happen. I need to make a point of order. Next time a truck or anything else that goes down since it's this body's obligation to do it could we please be informed and Thank talk you. about this before the piece of equipment or truck or whatever goes 
because that's how it's supposed to work. Not, oh, hey, you open the door and, oh, my gosh, you, you know, it was in bad shape. Right. I don't care about that. But well, it is a point that you have a habit of not including the council. You just do it. Gotcha. And that's not how this is supposed to work, Brad. I understand. So with that said, I'll help you with the next one. We have the John Deere backhoe. Mm -hmm. We've been three months dealing with this. Okay. And I, but we've been aware of that. That this is something that is just something get new that happened. I get it. I got it. A lot of times when this happens, it's things that we can't afford to wait on, like when the salt truck went down. We had no choice. We can't. We don't always have the luxury of time to bring things to council, and sometimes things. I get it. Need remedy. And I will. I will try to more communicate on some of these Thank you, Mr. Peterson, yes, for thank coming. You. Thank, thank you. you so much. Good night. Good night. Good night. I guess some of the times that Shane and I we get wrapped up in what we got going on, and we want to get some of these things wrapped up. But you're right. I will get better at that, so this doesn't happen. And the next thing that him and I got to keep dealing with, with you guys understanding too, is we got this problem with the backhoe. I can't believe we take it. We got emails going back and forth trying to resolve it. Mm -hmm. We still waiting for that harness? I was to put the harness on it, but it didn't fix it. It's past that. It's got to get. It's got to get. It, I, 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 I called John Deere corporate, or I emailed them, um, and started a, uh, a ticket on it. Mm -hmm. um, they're saying it's the. They're saying the, first they were saying the left um, joystick went out. Now they're saying both joysticks are out. But the joystick on the right hand side, the manufacturer is no longer in business, so they can't get a right joystick, which means none of the hydraulics work on it. I'm like, how can AIS sell something that they can't service? It's not even that old. No, it's a 2007. Look at the camera. So, but we're going to have to do something. I mean, I've got, you know, we still have uh, water main break spots that we have to repair, you know, in people's yards. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think what we're going to have to do, and not that we need to talk about that, but trying to change the subject, but the, we got to get a hold of them. Say, look, you got to pick this up and take it up there. You got to get your technicians there instead of keep driving off to our location. Yeah. This, this, I don't know why it can't be fixed. But anyway, this was something that was supposed to be more efficient than this. We were trying to get quotes to you guys, and then we had a window open from Young saying, if you get it up here, get us a VIN number, we can get this done, we can accelerate this way. And that's where we ran it. Make a motion to approve the repairs to the GMC crew cab through Frank and Moose Young GMC, not to exceed eighteen thousand seven hundred eighteen eighteen thousand eight hundred. So eighteen seven hundred seven, right? Sounds like that. Sam, you second it? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Table call, please. Schulte? Oh. <coughs> yes. Schulberg? Yes. Stando? Yes. Walker? Yes. Hitchcock? Yes. Thank you. Um, approval resolution 2023-03 to establish a mileage rate for 2023-2023. <coughs> Uh, um, we gotta reestablish this. Yeah, the millage is the right. same as it has been for many years. It's just formalities that we have to do. Yep, okay. Recommend the council approve as resolution we have in front of us. Number 2023, in the Act, June 13, 2023. For a bit of a year. I recommend the council to do that. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. 
Shelby? Yes. Shelburne? Yes. Sandum? Yes. Walker? Yes. 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 And so did there, are there any comments that came in this evening that we should address tonight? Uh, I just got one from Argus. Uh, she saw one of the contractors helping a visually impaired man down the sidewalk of Main Street. Um, because they moved the bricks on the corner there, he helped them wrap through um, all safe, and she was happy about that. Excellent. I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear what, what did you have to say. Well, I asked if there was any comments that came in from the video oh, okay. that we need to address. Yeah, one of the comments was just one of the contractors helped the visually impaired man down the okay. main street where the bricks moved down the corner there. He just got him through safely. Thank you. Going away, huh? It's not like we might be right on schedule, but this baby might be able to be done when school goes back in the session at 10 minutes. That would be real nice. And then have it back up all the way to our new room. Oh, yeah, they finally, they finally paved Part E Road, and they they were only going to go over the hill. They had, they had marks on there where they were just doing the hill, and I think Road Commission just said now we're just going to do all of it. Right. Yeah. So it was very right. nice. Oh, this been done already? Yeah. They, they did that the day after our last meeting because I said, oh, I'll, I'll call. Yeah, we did that the same day that um, county was paving that. Um, <coughs> there was just the first day they started working on um, Main Street, and there was something else going on. Oh, there was a tree company and cutting down a tree on Main Street. Mm -hmm. So I mean, everything just all. Well, there's trucks everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot going on this summer. Yeah. So it's good. With myself and on behalf of Shane, we have this backbone with brand new tires, loaded rear tires. We use them for snowbox. We haven't abused it. We don't. We really don't. You know, the back part of the hole we understand, but well, now it's the front bucket doesn't even work. So yeah, nothing. We need. You can't. You can't really even move it because. You can't pick the boom up, or you can't move the front bucket up. So, so that we're dragging it. That's their that's their problem. So at this point, to the council, we should be able to call AIS, who we purchased it from, and say, "Look, come get this. Take it up to your shop." And we these are the bills that we've already paid to have parts replaced, and it still doesn't work. This this is a this is a problem. And I read this email that went to John Deere, AIS, and they they acknowledged our parts changing process that didn't solve anything. Is so, the current line of thinking that once it's fixed and repaired, get rid of it? I yeah, I kind of think so. Okay. But um but to go further without having no backbone or using other people's backbones, we need to I'm thinking not to let the guy come out anymore, it needs to go up to their shop and let them look at it and try to get them to try it with it on again. Yeah, they they got um, trailer will detach and then they winch it on. Because mm -hmm. we're to keep having that come out and pain is just ridiculous unless they're going to actually know what they're supposed to fix. So he's he spent more than 40 hours working on that thing, and I don't. And, nothing and it's no better than what it was no. when you first started on it. That's worse. <laughs> it's worse. Because we could use the loader bucket before, now we can't even use the loader bucket. Has there been any any conversation with AIS along the lines of, hey, you take this boat anchor and get us into something new at a discount? Um, I need to make that go. Well, I, I, I kind of bypassed them and went right to the it. Yeah. So you have corporate what we're dealing with, but but I, but you know when did I email them? But month ago. Yeah. Month ago. Uh, I just I gave them all the information they needed. I want to say it was on Friday. Okay. So. It's kind of early, but it seems like somebody would get a hold of me. Should already happen because the municipality and anybody else, they would, yeah, they need the machine to run. So we, we just, just need to make sure the council's okay, they're going to charge us more. Yeah, I know. Up. But it needs to be picked up and taken to their shop. They needed the information for it to decide who was going to handle it, and they never told me who was going to handle it because there's so many different departments there, mm -hmm. or Iowa or Illinois or wherever. The Iowa. Yeah. Call him again. It'd be a bug. Yeah, I should call 
right here. So it was um, May 26th. That's when the original one went out. Okay. May 26th. So, um, okay. Yeah, CF customer Shane, June 2nd. Yep. So thank so you for contacting of, John Chip 10 days ago. ago. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I think 10 days is long enough to. It says, yeah. thank you for contracting, contacting John Deere Construction and Forestry. Please return the information below in this case to be sent to the Territory Manager of Resolution. So we had all the information that we sent. We sent it at 410 John Deere. We sent it June 2nd. So 10 days is enough. Yeah. Start by room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as, as long as the council's okay in the morning change the call up say well come get it yeah come pick it up yeah yeah i can do that okay you know and on some of these things like when the snow was blowing and winter and, and the blades and when we did some of that thing we did it quickly because we had the availability and we did it and it worked out this deal with the truck Kim and I kept asking the people that we knew to give us estimates because we knew to give three estimates to the council. And then I called up Shane and said, look, there is a window where they said one week and they'll fix the truck. And, and the only thing I didn't think of is Nelson Collision, but I caught the hot spy shop, said it's too big of a job, doesn't want to do it. And you had down there soccer, we handed it to them, but nobody wants to sit down and do the paperwork so we can present it to you before. Seems like the, the extent of the damage is the truck is probably teetering on savability. And yeah. that's why nobody wants to touch it or quote on it. Right. Well, it's it's kind of literally good. cut pieces off from it versus throwing bondo on it. They literally had to cut pieces off or weld pieces on it. And weld new pieces on it. Yeah. Well, they're probably just going to do whole panels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so. so, and then the deal with the, the council to understand is we got Buckley, Michigan, that these guys are really nice people. They're, they're kind of like Dutch people that we can refer to that are monitoring a single axle dump truck that would be anywhere from five to seven years old or newer. Mm -hmm. And then they're they're the ones that might be able to be that go to like sparkly, we're gonna have one for the winter this year. And then Freightliner and I will continue to read my email to make sure I follow through it. There is a single extra truck that has a Billy Gordo on it, ordered and it'll be the the first quarter of twenty twenty four. So it would be January, February, like the end of March, first of April. They can come off this semi line, name on it. If we want it or not, this is the money, this is the price. And then from there, go right to truck and trailer. And they would monitor the truck being brand new off the assembly line when DK have it, go to truck and trailer, and they would put the stuff on it for us. Okay. Yeah, and the last number I seen was 187,000. I, I drove down to Huntsville last week and I drove past at least a dozen different. Lots, and I'm looking at there ain't a single single axle out there. Yeah. And in a national and Ford, in my opinion, from the maintenance ability of my knowledge, is elect the electrical part of it is not as well as a freight liner mm -hmm. or the other types. I, I had the same thing. I had an old old Ford dump truck, and they were they were decent, but they went. We had a Ford. I think it was an F650, um, nothing but problems. Uh, I'm just, I've never really been a Ford guy, but there was, with the truck that we had, and that was uh, 2000, I think. And we had it, it, I think we had it four or five years, and uh, I put a transmission in it. I've always been a General Moore's guy, but I, I believe that the truck was sound enough. It is salty, but it's sound enough and it, it, it would be done right. Like the back like the back roll. If they actually do the back roll right, then yeah, let's use it, let's go. But it's not there yet, so yeah, it's a bummer. Okay. I hope I can vlog you guys when it shows up because that's that's my idea. Yeah, as long as as long as we can afford to wait the three hundred days for a new one, I'm not opposed to it, but you know, fingers crossed. 
I still think you have that. I, I still think that window should stay in there and then yeah. follow through with the next program that we can come up with. You know, I've seen a few things in auctions. I know I've sent you some, but I know that that's, that's a very difficult moving target. Yeah, and it's so hard to, I mean, there again, it's something that you're bidding on, and, you know, what, how do you, how does the council approve something like that, you know? Right. But, I mean, we're still looking. Sometimes that, that does help, though. They'll, they'll, they'll hold with a small deposit and then be able to bring it to you guys or have an emergency meeting if you do that, so. Mm -hmm. If we found something that great, and I'm sure we could, even if you came up with one, we on auction, anything. Well, yeah. I mean, mainly if you've seen one, even if it was on auction, you say, "Look, there's, there's, this is like everything we want." And then we can do a emergency meeting and mm -hmm. say, "Look, we need to bid this to X amount of dollars." Right. right. Well, I mean, we kind of almost did that with the UTVs that Josh yeah. Yeah. It's harder, but it can be done. Anything else from you, Scott Bull? Nothing on my end. So Jessica said that we have uh, the funeral home director decided he might still go through with the funeral home next to the school even though Facebook gave him some records. There's a lot more um, positive feedback yeah, than there was negative. There's really only two or three people who were Pretty very good. outspoken against it. Yeah. May I ask what the what was the concern? The concern is proximity to the school. The funeral home? Yes. Yeah. That's you, you didn't smell. want children to see. Funeral homes don't smell. Like no, it. <laughs> it was the general sentiment of you know the, the business of death right being so close to the school. school. Okay. Yeah. Parking, parking. Yeah, parking no, was another. Parking makes more sense to me than anything, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if, if he wants to come back, it's, it's great. Love to have him. And make mention to Josh Rocky if he gets a chance. We'd like a quote from the council on cameras too for downtown that we talked about earlier. I know it's going to be on the road, but it's definitely as we yeah. continue to do it, we're trying to get something like that happening. Yeah, I can talk to him tomorrow morning. Should be able to see him. You just have to have it so you guys can look at it and the village can look at it so we got something to go off of. I think signs up that said the town's been monitored, it might help some. There, like a sign on like the light post and all that sort of stuff saying, Hey, the downtown area is now being monitored and surveillance. Um, just for your awareness, it comes along all those lines. And because we just don't have the deputies at this point, I did you ever speak to those Livingston County guys who were retiring? Or? I did. How that go? They, they, they said, We won't find anybody for 50, it'd be more like 65, 70,000 plus clothes. Mm -hmm. So, so you. About, I think we were thinking seventy. So you have three guys would be two hundred ten thousand, and then you'd have to have two vehicles. So you you would beat up five hundred thousand, probably closer to over that. Anyway. You think over five hundred? No, it would be initial cost that but they they said insurance. The guy mentioned insurance. Three guys, two cop cars, set up in a. Station, you have the right to be close to 500,000 to start, you know, and then from there, you have. Well, if we start that out. was his guess, and that was a Vienna police officer. Mm -hmm. okay. And then what are we going to be paying for the two deputies, or what were we doing like for the 80 hours? Oh, it was uh, 70,000 a quarter. No, I don't know. 80. It was two. I thought it was over 300 a year. It was. It is. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know the new forty hours. That, that first initial startup. But then, if we had three, three people, that would mean we'd have more than eighty hours. You sure would, right? You would. Yeah, we you would. Did. Have, did. We would have around the clock coverage. To be honest with you, it's just that first initial setup money, that startup money. You're not wrong. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what I think I said last time. It, it comes down to value. Is would it be more expensive potentially? But what you'd also have better coverage. Would it have to the village. Right. Why did the village get rid of the police department that they had? Oh, I don't know. Oh, that they had, huh? <laughs> <laughs> did you not see his look? <laughs> 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 
I, I think it's worth continuing to look into personally, but and I think you probably could get you probably could get some you probably get some kickback from some of the other people knowing you'd have full time coverage. You probably would support having more police staff, more if coverage. We, if we thought we and wanted all the officers. You mean like mm -hmm. checking with like local businesses in the business park and stuff? Mm -hmm. Not a bad idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We should probably reach out and say, hey, do you guys feel like you want more coverage? Because if you do, this is what we do. Would you want to contribute? And everybody went, then you can understand. I bet if you talk to Anker, I bet he would. I bet he'd be all over it. It's an idea. I, I was just basically trying to hope that the deputies, I see some 40 state police guys that graduated, and then I hope that what Scott's going through with the Ingham County Sheriff, that they get some more guys in and go back to what we had, because it was awesome the way it was. Yeah, but we're so. going to be on the low run of that totem pole. I've been seeing all the pictures mm -hmm. of the graduating class and yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah, we are. <laughs> no, I'm at far as when they had the 80 hours, I felt the Ingham County Sheriff give us their all when we had the 80 right, hours. Right. But we and don't have two people. We, we don't have, have two. It was it was good. And like I said, I've been seeing the pictures posted on Facebook of their graduating classes and stuff. So I I think you went you went through a stall because of COVID and then just picked back up and then it was a little iffy how they was it protecting the guys and now we're back to getting the right wording around so the deputies mm -hmm. feel safe that you go back and mm -hmm. want that type of word. <laughs> but you got you got two retirees, you're gonna have to chase these guys down. Right. They, they just said you're gonna spend five hundred to get it started up. Right? And then it's just the two of them. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. The yeah. contract, was that the question of what the this year's contract would have been mm -hmm. with Ingham County? Yes. Uh, the numbers I see, 327,000 some change for 2023. But that was before we that was before the reduction. That was before the reduction. I was just as a point of reference. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with all the parts going down and everything. Okay. Yeah. 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 So anything else for the night? No. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same time. Here, <laughs> 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 <laughs>